morning folks, how you doing? Old Bez Cat is out in the woods, got the dog, Rosie, um, she's a bit hyper alert at the moment, I don't know if there's something running around, I think squirrels or something or other, but she's going fucking mental for them, so uh, I'm just, uh, I've put my tarp up in the early part of the video, you might have seen it, it sort of all of a sudden just started pissing it down, so I've just sort of erected my tarp quickly under a uh, under uh, sort of like off some of these overhang branches on this oak tree just to keep me out so I can have an impromptu brew. I'm drinking uh, uh, this nut coffee, it's fucking lovely. I'm not a connoisseur with coffee because, like I keep telling you, I'm a tea drinker. I actually am a tea drinker, but I do like a get here. Sorry, folks, Rosie, get here, get round now. I had an issue with her some time ago down here where she went down some foxholes and then she was down there for about an hour or so I mean it's just instinctive, it's just part of her nature but when she came out she was um, totally bloodied up um, covered in fleas and all the rest of it so but it's just part of her nature really just had to get her sorted and uh, she's back on it like she go, she go again it's almost like having a it's the equivalent to like a doorman I've been a bouncer having sort of a, a, a dog like that sometimes I think so yeah, so I've just come out for an impromptu uh, trip this morning, impromptu, and most of my trips are impromptu when it's a one day. Um, it's recently, the Friday, it's me and, uh, and the lovely wife's anniversary. 22 years we've been together, fucking hell, that woman deserve, deserves a medal. Um, so we went out last night for a nice bit of, you know, nice bit of curry and a nice little, you know, nice little social, just me and her. So uh, it was really nice. So, so I've just come out today. So, uh, chill out and fag. I'll probably move on from here. I'm here just because I'm quite near the factory bit. I'm not too far away from the front road, so I want to go a little bit further in the woodland. And, um, so, because uh, it, it was pissing it down earlier, I thought what I'll do is I'll just quickly so I'll say, set up the tarp, have a brew, and chill out, you know what I mean, have a fag. And then uh, I'll move on from here. So, uh, that's it, folks. Catch up with you in a little while.
folks, just packed up for me uh, my first little site. Um, the fucking heavens opened up, so I had to quickly, uh, as I say, what I've done was there was uh, an oak tree here with some overhanging branches, and I literally just set it up. So it was enough for me just to just to get a brew on the dog's house. So now what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to walk off a little bit deeper into the location where I normally go and set up a different spot there and uh, see how it goes. There's a, I've got an old uh, old entrance there. Maybe foxes. Another one over there. Anyway. So there it is folks, I'll catch up with you again in a little while. Uh, a bit more further into the woods. All right, later. Doing. Oh, what I'm looking for, I'm on a fucking search for some uh, a nice bit of ideally birch I think I'm looking for but um, what I'm after is to find a suitable bit of uh, fallen birch or something similar-ish and I want to use it for a uh, suitable material to make a rocket stove so um, I'm just on the prowl for one I'll for some at the moment, I'm not having a lot of luck. I'm sure I'll find something, but I'm, I'm being a little bit too selective, so I'm going um, I'm doing a bit of woodland shopping as it were, and uh, I'm seeking out something suitable for the, uh, for the um, materials to make the uh, construction of the rocket stove. Oh look, I've just uh, noticed over here. <laughs> A long while ago I come over here and uh, I made an impromptu, basically that was my bench, this length of order, and what I've done was there is I made a, an impromptu table and then I had my tarp set up um, and this is where I've stopped for my uh, lunch and food, I haven't been over this little spot for a while actually, so uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, let's see what we can uh, There's loads of sort of thin stuff. I don't know if you can hear the uh, those shotguns going over in the distance. There's a load of Essex boys doing over the bank. No, it ain't really. They're, uh, it's a local uh, shooting club. They're over there doing a bit of clay pigeon. I know that because my mate's a member. Hey, not being luck. It's a bit soft in the middle there. Yeah. Uh, soft on the outside. I might like that can be uh, desperate if I want to. Yeah, I've been doing a bit of uh, tree chopping over here and clearing some out. I don't know why exactly, but they have. What are you digging for? What is it? What the hell are you sniffing? Well, I found a. Uh, I had a lot of luck with a perch, um, but I've just found there's a length of um, alder. Um, 
you can always tell the order, especially like during these winter months, because you, you you know that's the old fruits that are on there. Obviously they're not edible, but the uh, they're the catkins, those ones there, and then they're the fruits. And it's quite an obvious one. It's supposed to be really good for charcoal. That's one process I'm going to have a go at making, but um, it's good for the bow drills as well. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a length for this, and um, it'll be a first time for me making making a. Uh, Making a stove, uh, making a rocket stove out of alder. So uh, I'll do my old usual Steven Spielberg prowess, and uh, we'll see how we get on. So I've got it now. As I say, I've cut it. It's about you know, it's about a three sort of four inch diameter, and I've cut it just over. A, I'm going to be cutting it just over a foot long, and uh, it don't look too bad in the middle there. So I'm going to be using this for my uh, for my rocket stove. See how it comes out. holds quite a lot of moisture anyway but I'm not too worried about the, uh, the bark too much we more want the you know, you know the main wood itself and it looks quite seasoned anyway so we'll give that a go okay. 
Right folks, what I'm going to do now is um, um, I've, cut the, uh, I've cut the length of wood that I'm going to use for the rocket stove and then what I'll do in this next bit, I'm just going to make a gentle persuader Gentle persuader is basically my nickname for a, for a mallet so I'll basically, from this length of uh, alder that, that, that's fallen down a little bit further up, I've basically cut a length of alder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fashion that I mean I can use it as it is but if you've never seen it done before what I'll do is I'll show you how to make a, a gentle persuader so I'm just going to use this, uh, this log as my, uh, as my rest spot I've got my uh, wildlife hatchet inspection of which end I'm going to use for the, uh, so the main section a bit for my hand well I'm probably going to use that section there for my uh, for the main clump the main meat of the mallet as it were so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a, a stop cut <laughs> way around the circumference of the, uh, the bit of wood that I'm using. I'm hoping that it meets up around the other side almost. <laughs> or in this case I'm using my mallet, uh, my mallet and the axe what we do is just create a just chop into the stop cut So starting to go a little bit now, but um, probably good for making spoons with actually. It's a nice sponge about that. I might take a cup of this inside actually for, uh, for spoonage and stuff. is a nice crude gentle persuader
like that, so that's not too bad, is it? I'll split the wood, put a stop cut about a hand's width from the bottom. Um, then, what I'm going to do is going to split the sections out one at a time. I haven't got a pencil with me, that's why I keep offering them up just to make sure that they're all together. And then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that section out of there to create the flue. I've got loads of other videos on this if you want to see a better instruction that have been made. It hasn't quite hit the uh, bottom of the stop cup it doesn't matter there now. looks like the rain clouds are coming in again it wasn't supposed to be forecast rain today but you really can't trust the old uh, weather forecast can you sort of make your own decision over it So I've never used Alder before, it's got quite a nice, quite a, you know it doesn't spit down to the stop line very much, the stop cut very well, it's quite a, quite a smooth wood actually, inside.
Ben ook. I always just put them back together, jigsaw them up, just make sure they all fit. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put a series of um, uh, cuts into the surface of the wood on the inside, so it just increases the uh, ignition area. Uh, Rapping Antuli, if you're interested, is the name of the uh, this name of type of cut on this kind of surface. It's associated with the rocket stoves. Okay, wrapping on to me. Some, uh, uh, some string to bind it all together. And my uh, my little bag here, got loads of bits and pieces in there. And what I do is I keep some um, some garden twine for such eventualities. I mean, you can you you know you can use brake cable, you can use paracord or whatever. But that's cheap enough to buy, so that's what I tend to use my paracord. I tend to like using it for other stuff. I could even use snares if you wanted to. I mean, the ground's quite soft here as well. What I could do is dig out a little bit and just seat, seat them into the ground. But as I say, I'm going to use the, uh, that garden twine. Okay, so let's put them back together. This is probably the most awkwardest bit, I think. Calf and then basically wrap that around now two or three times. Get this and then repeat the same at the bottom half. Do it down here somewhere away from the vent hole. And eventually it will burn, but you know it's uh, it'll probably yeah. and there, folks, is your rocket stove. Um, I tell this story quite a lot. And um, once I was over here, back in the spring, about a year ago, and I found a... Uh, I managed to get a nice bit of, um, bit of birch, actually. And basically I made, the, got, made one, um, stuck my kettle on it, had a brew, and then I thought, oh, fuck it, I'll have my lunch. So what I've done was I literally tipped it on its side, and I had my folding trivet with me. What I've done was I put the trivet over the top where the uh, vent hole was and there was enough heat coming through there, it was burning, burning, but anyway I cooked my lunch on it I had mushrooms, tomatoes and all that sort of stuff um, so I cooked them on my frying pan and then what I've done was when I was finished, not far from where I was sitting um, there was a puddle on the floor so I picked the stove up, I threw the stove into the puddle to extinguish it save me using my water uh, I mean that's another thing, I mean it doesn't even take a lot just to extinguish it and you can carry it and reuse it again and you'll be surprised how quickly they'll relight um, as I say I threw it into a puddle, extinguished it, cut the cordage off took that away and threw it away and then what I've done with the uh, wood, just chopped all the wood up, chucked it back into the trees and when I come back to where I was sitting there was no fire skull so it's quite a, it's quite a nice composite um, skill to have you know if it's wet you know, you know, there's snow on the floor and all the rest of it. You know, it's akin to the, uh, you know, to the Swedish candle or the Finnish candle, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's just a nice, a nice, uh, a nice thing to make. And um, in the next bit, you'll see me lighting it. Hey.
make yourself a selfie stick. Have a bit of an older branch. Look at that. You get sick now, don't you? What I'm doing, I'm going back to this spot. Where I have my table. Feeling sick yet? Yeah, you know, I am. Mm. Look at that. I've, there's the table, and then obviously what I've done is I've rested a piece of a branch up against that log. Look at that bracket fungus, the way it's grown around it. <laughs> it's actually grown around it. Look. Little tip, if it's been raining, it's not a bad idea if you can to sort of um, collect wood or collect the branches and twigs that have been off the floor. They're normally a, a bit drier than the stuff that's obviously going on around on the floor. So all those like twigs and that, they're obviously quite handy for materials for getting the fire going. Now, what I've noticed, there's a little nest in there. I'm not a bird twitcher so I'm not a twitcher bird watcher or anything like that even though I do like watching um, winged birds um, so if anyone can fill me in on what that type of nest is I'll be really grateful it's only it's only about sort of five foot off the ground four and a half five foot off the ground and uh, I don't know maybe a wren or something like that I've got no idea but I'm obviously saying quite small I mean if I wanted to I could sort of use that as a bit of me tinder for me tinder as well but I'm not I'm gonna leave that there and there's Rosie. Right, so I'll go back to my little spot. I managed to get some uh, some twigs here. And that's what I'm going to use to get the uh, rocket stove going, so I can get another brew on the go. Right, I'm going to light it now. So. Uh, Picking Alfred's cakes. And a bit of char off. And what I'll do once it's gone, I'll be feeding it in with lead pencil thickness uh, twigs. So I'll catch the inside of it a light. quite an amount. Why? Right, because I can and because the wood's quite damp. Else fails. I've got a bit of fat wood as well. I've got the twigs as well, that hopefully should be enough to get it going.
dog snorting in the background. It's like a fight between you like that. Twigs are starting to uh, slowly take. The wood is still quite damp. The idea is that once it's going, the better the wood, the more seasoned it is, then it'll be self fueling and you wouldn't know you shouldn't need to add any more wood to it apart from the, you know, like when you initially started. They already what I'm going to do now. I'm going to place two um, I'm use green sticks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two metal pegs to place on there, and then that will create a further vent at the top. And then my pot will be going on there. Just keep feeding it for a little while, as I say, because the wood is quite damp. You know, this is what you have to work with. It's, it's just a matter of trying it out. I've never, as I say, used all wood before. It's not the greatest of wood. It's quite a damp wood. But, um, Okay. It will be because it's damp, I'm obviously working with <coughs> damp materials today. So it's been raining. Is 
see there now the flame which is pretty good. And there you go folks, a rocket stove. Of woods to be using, but it's working, it's getting the job done. So, if you can't find any decent birch or something suitable, then you improvise, you adapt, you overcome, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is what it's all about. It's all part of the bushcraft and getting out and trying different stuff out, you know. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil up some water to have a brew, and then I'm going to put on some boiled eggs. I've also got some bannock. I've got some bannock as well, so I'll probably just do a bannock pack as well. What I'm going to do now, once my eggs are boiled, a bit of an experiment really, I'm going to put this bit of mesh on top of the uh, rocket stove with the pegs and then um, I've got some bannock bread made up, some mix. What I'm going to do with more of the dry one with the flour on it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a patty, make a kind of an ash cake and see how it comes out on now. Be interesting I suppose, probably burn it a little bit but hey ho. It's probably burning through that alder now. You can hear those eggs, those eggs have only been on a couple of minutes. I mean one that that pot's titanium anyway and that's and that rocket stove right now is just generating a, sh uh, a shitload of heat. So yeah, I've got my bannock. I'm going to put the grill on now. Let that heat up for a few seconds. And then uh, we'll put the side that's got the dryer. This side's got slightly more flour on it. So hopefully it might not stick as much. We'll stick it on there now. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Well, with not too much difficulty, I managed to flip it over. It's a little bit burnt on the outside, but it's expectable. I'll eat it anyway. And uh, I'll just put the sticky side on there now. Unfortunately, it's not on the camera because I'm holding the camera and trying to do two jobs at once. All right, so what I've done, and um, the pegs and the grill that's normally the mesh that's normally. What I've done was I used the leather to uh, take it off and just rest it on my lid. It's still a bit doughy in the middle, but I'm going to place that back on the fire 
with another peg because that one rolled off and uh, we'll stick it back on let's see how we get on so there we go I've got a cup of coffee bannock bread and boiled eggs which I'm basically going to grump on there what I'm doing now I'm just drying out my pot make sure it's all nice and dry which it is I just want to do the lid now that's nice and dry as well just flip those pegs off Do we? I'll just let that burn for now and then uh, extinguish it so from that rocket stove and there's still quite a lot of meat left on it as well wood wise be enough to uh, to do your job so uh, there you go folks all right Rosie, come here, yeah. Come here. And here. And even Rosie likes a bit of boiled egg as well. Yeah. Yeah. She does. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. Rosie. Yeah. Oh mate, she's making me out to be a liar. Mate, you want it? I don't believe it. Normally she scoffs these down. What's the matter with you? Sorry folks, she don't want one. I have no idea why she didn't want that. Yeah, she didn't want the bald egg, but she's having the bannock. There you go. Yeah, there you go. She does like bald eggs, mind. Mm. There you go, one more. There you go. set the tarp up because it started to grow over again thought it was going to rain and as luck would have it if it doesn't rain by the time I put this away it'll be nice and dry so uh, after the earlier rain we had it's fortunate enough that it's nice and dry a um, little bit of a, a silly thing on my uh, on my bit of is that I didn't actually have much paracord with me normally I've got coils of paracord that I normally use for the tarp so I had to basically just improvise with with bits and pieces so I've used a little bit of the spare garden twine just to tie just to sort of suspend the tarp I used one of the, the shorter toggles that I normally use uh, as a pot hanger so I use that as well, tied onto a branch there. There was a little bit of um, like washing line cable or something I used on the other side. So it was a little bit of a hit and miss with the top there. It's a bit of a, and then I used one of my other toggles on that one. But they're actually only short lengths of paracord. And then the last bit I just pegged out over there on the floor. So, uh, but we improvised, we still managed. It still would have, even if we did have rain, it still would have kept it off our heads for now. So, uh, brilliant. The old rocket stove still smoking away there. There's a new bit of mesh. It's gone a little bit out of shape, but it's really, it's really handy for some time when I'm out and about. missing a peg. I did have four pegs. I don't know where the fourth one's gone. It's probably on the floor somewhere. Oh, it might have dropped into my bag. Yeah. Oh, 
course up in there, but I'm down a peg at the moment. I might do just take a I just wrap it. Not, I've got another bit of this mesh, but I've made a proper decent leather pouch for it, so I've just wrapped it around now. And it's nice and flat, nice and light. And I can just stick it in my rucksack, in my day sack. Hmm, where's that peg gone? Lovely now, the sun's out, <laughs> blue bit of blue sky. Um, right now, the rocket stove, there's still a little bit of heat there, but a lot of it's gone out. But the, as I say, the beauty of this is that there's no fire scar, so you know it's um, it's a real, real great little um, you know, if you don't want it, if you have you know, if you don't want to use your you know, your little wood stove or your gas stove or whatever it is and you want to practice a few skills with your axe and knife and saw and all those bits and pieces a little bit of wood skills and obviously the rocket stoves are quite a, a nice simple one to make the only addition i would say on top of it is um it's just to have a pencil really just to mark the um mark each section when you're making it just so that you can number it one two three to four rather than um you know having to, having to keep offering it together so um so there you go folks, that's a, that's a rocket stove, I mean, you know, it's not like it's done, it's not the first video you wouldn't have seen someone showing you how to do a rocket stove. I've got a few um, on my, on, you know, on my list of videos there, showing you how to make one as well, but, you know, it's nice to actually come out. I've made one for a little while, so it's nice to come out and um, knock one up, cook, cook a bit of a uh, old eggs bannock and a um, nice cup of coffee on it. And, uh, so there you go now. So. Uh, I'll let that totally cool down and then I'll return it back to nature, back to the woods. Alright folks, so the stove uh, has gone out now, I can put my thumb in there on my hand, you know what I mean, it's not going to get burnt. So what I could do, I mean I could just leave it here, leave it with the table and maybe use it another time. Or Undo that bit of string now. And what I can do, just return it to nature and let it decompose. And who know, you might even get some fungi grow on that. folks um, hope you enjoy that video uh, a few little how to there made the rocket stove and all the rest of it um, just about head off home now me and Rosie 
Um, she's had her share, but I feel sure she keep going. She's got like tons of energy, that dog. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe and even hit the thumbs up button. Let's um, comments as well. Let's know what you think of the videos. You can get get some real nice positive um, comments coming back of late. Well, I always get them pretty much most of the time anyway. So um, I've, uh, I will get back to your comments as well. I've been having a quick fleet through and people are sort of coming back with the questions. So um, very, very soon I'll be doing a, a Q&A. Um, I'll, I'll probably pick out five questions and we'll just go through them. I won't be rehearsing them. It'll be totally off the cuff coming from my angle and um, just have a bit of fun doing it. All right, so I um, appreciate all your comments. Um, keep them coming, keep the thumbs ups coming and all the rest of it. And uh, again, comments, just let us know what you think. And as I say, um, we'll get the Q&A video up very, very soon. I've had quite a few people now sort of asking questions and that. So we'll um, maybe I'll do a couple, maybe I'll do, you know, depending on how it goes, maybe I'll do a couple of Q&As, we'll see how it goes. So um, there it is, folks. Um, future things I've got coming up. Um, couple of weekends time I'm going out with uh, Barney for Barney's Bimbles you might have seen him in some of my other videos uh, I believe Kent Survival Andy from Kent Survival is coming out of us and um, I think Barney's invited some other guys from over the other side of the river so um, whether or not they turn up um, that'll be uh, the weekend commencing hopefully uh, the winter solstice so that'll be the 21st of December so we're out for a weekend Hopefully, if the weather permitting and all the rest of it, we'll probably still go out anyway. But you know, it's sometimes you know we don't want it raining too much because it does put dampers on things quite literally, doesn't it? So, um, so there it is, folks. All right. So thanks for watching. Um, <clears throat> hope you're enjoying the way I'm doing some of these videos of late. Been trying to curb up on the language again as usual, um, but unfortunately, some of you, some of you fuckers like it. So I'm having a you know, but I'm balancing it out, trying to do the best I can with it all. And um, there it is. All right, folks. So um, thanks for watching. Take care. And there's Cat signing out. Catch up with you soon.